Good morning all. We'll continue our discussion on the effective stress principle. In the previous class we had dealt with the effective stress, the total stress and the neutral stress. And we had discussed the fluctuation of water table and its effect. Now we'll try to see a layered soil now. Layered soil looks like this. Just a simple example. You have level A, level B and level C. And between A and B you have layer number 1 whose height or depth is H1 and has a soil whose unit weight is gamma saturated 1. Likewise below that you have a layer BC or layer 2 whose height is H2 and the soil has a unit weight of gamma saturated 2. Let's take case A where the water table is above layer 1 which means the water table is like this above layer 1 at a height of h. Now we'll try to deal with each of these levels a, b and c separately. At level a, a here what is the total stress? Now, when you talk about total stress you need to think about the weight above it. Whatever weight that you have above it will add to the total stress. So the total weight that comes at level AA is nothing but the weight of the water. So since we have taken unit area one by one, which we had discussed in the previous video, area gets cancelled out and what remains is gamma W into H or unit weight of water multiplied by height H is a total stress at level AA. What, are the, what is the neutral stress or U at this level A? When you talk about the neutral stress, you need to think about the height of the water table above your target layer. In this case, the height of the water table above your target level is H. So U is equal to gamma W into H itself. Total stress is gamma W into H. Neutral stress is also gamma W into H. So effective stress sigma dash is sigma minus U will be equal to zero. Now at level BB that is at this level what is the total stress? So when you talk about total stress you need to think about the weight the total weights acting above it so that's gamma W H plus gamma sat 1 H1 gamma W H plus gamma sat 1 H1 what is a neutral stress at level BB? So when you talk about neutral stress, think about the height of water table above that level. So the height of water table above that level is H plus H1. So neutral stress is gamma W into H plus H1. From which you'll get the total stress, I'm mean, sorry, the effective stress. Subtracting U from sigma gives you the effective stress sigma dash. So gamma WH gets cancelled out from these two equations and what remains is gamma sat 1 H1 minus gamma WH1. So gamma sat 1 minus gamma W is nothing but the submerged unit weight gamma dash. In this case gamma dash 1. So sigma dash is gamma dash 1 H1. Now the third level is CC. What is the total stress at CC? Gamma WH plus gamma sat 1 H1 plus gamma sat 2 H2. That will be the total stress. Neutral stress? Gamma W into H1 plus H2 plus H which is the total height of the water table above CC. So gamma W into H plus H1 plus H2. Sigma dash, effective stress, is the one that you get by subtracting u from sigma. So gamma 1 dash h1 plus gamma 2 dash h2. That will be the effective stress. So think about the variation of effective stress. It was 0 at level A, gamma 1 dash h1 at level B gamma 1 dash h1 plus gamma 2 dash h2 at level c. 
So we'll try to plot that variations of sigma u and sigma dash here. You have C, B, A levels of ground and water level here. And the total stress variation is something like this. Total stress sigma varies like this. Starts from zero here, ends at a value here. U, or the neutral stress, varies linearly because it's just a function of gamma w. You have a single function gamma w, so you have gamma w into 0 here, gamma w into h here, gamma w into h plus h1 here, gamma w into h plus h1 plus h2 here. So you have a straight line here. Effective stress diagram, sigma dash, will have a variation like this. It starts from 0 at level AA, will have a value of gamma 1 dash h1 here, will have a value of gamma 1 dash h1 plus gamma 2 dash h2 here. So this is a variation of the effective stress if the water table is at a height h above level A. Now as a second case, case B, we'll try to do this when the water table is at level AA. Earlier it was above level A at a distance of H and now it's like this at level A. Just like the previous example, we'll take each level separately. At level A, what is the total stress? You don't have any weight above that, so the total stress will be zero. What is a neutral stress? Again, the height of the water table is zero here because it is at that level. So you have neutral stress also equal to zero. Sigma equal to zero, u equal to zero. Based on b, which you'll get sigma dash is equal to zero because sigma dash is sigma minus u. Second level bb here. Total stress gamma sat one h one. Neutral stress gamma w h one. So sigma is gamma sat 1 h1 and u is gamma w h1 from which you will get sigma dash gamma sat 1 minus gamma w into h1 and gamma sat 1 minus gamma w is the submerged unit weight gamma 1 dash. So effective stress is gamma 1 dash h1. Third level, level cc. Total stress. You think about all the weights above that, so that's gamma sat 1 h1 plus gamma sat 2 h2. Neutral stress, you think about the height of the water table above your target level, that's h1 plus h2. So gamma w into h1 plus h2. Subtracting will give you effective stress gamma 1 dash h1 plus gamma 2 dash h2. So even here, look at the variation. It starts from 0, has a value of gamma 1 dash h1. At B, has a value of gamma 1 dash h1 plus gamma 2 dash h2 at C. So when you compare case A with case B, case A, you had the water table above ground level at the height of h. And case B, you had the water table at the ground level. And when you compare the effective stresses at each of these levels, you can see that it remains the same. Or when you compare case A and case B, it can be seen that the effective stress at level A, level B and level C remains the same, which means the effective stress is independent of the height of the water table above the ground level. The only difference here is that the water table was above the ground level. So any fluctuation in water table above the ground level will not have an effect on the effective stress. But it may have an effect on the effective stress when the water table varies or fluctuates within the ground level. Now to understand that, you will have to work out the effective stress at each levels AA, BB and CC in the following cases in your notebook as an assignment. So case A and B was discussed here. Case C, try to solve 
for water table between AA and BB, which means the water table is somewhere here. Next case is water table between BB and CC. Effect of surcharge. Let's take the same example with two layers of soil, heights H1 and H2. And let's assume that the water table is at level BB. And since it's at level BB, the soil above the water table will have the bulk unit weight marked as gamma 1. And the soil below the water table will have saturated unit weight marked as gamma sat 2. Let's assume that there's a surcharge Q like this. And we'll try to solve the total effective and neutral stresses for levels A, B and C. At level AA, what is the total stress? Earlier it was zero, but now you have a load here. So sigma total stress will be equal to Q. What is the neutral stress? It is zero because the water table is well below that. So U is equal to zero. From which you will get effective stress sigma dash equal to Q. At level BB here, what is the total stress? You have Q already here plus gamma 1 H1. So that will be the total stress. Neutral stress will again be equal to zero because the water table is just at level BB. So you don't have any height of water table with respect to level BB. So you have sigma equal to Q plus gamma 1 H1 and U, neutral stress, equal to zero from which you will get effective stress sigma dash equal to Q plus gamma 1 H1. Let's take case C or at level CC what is the total stress? Q plus gamma 1 H1 plus gamma sat 2 H2. What is the neutral stress? Water table is here. Our target level is here. Height is H2. So U or the neutral stress is gamma W into H2. So total stress is Q plus gamma 1 H1 plus gamma sat 2 H2 and neutral stress is gamma W into H2. From which you'll get the effective stress as Q plus gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 dash H2. In short, when you have a surcharge Q, it will have its effect on the effective stresses in each levels. It will be Q at AA, it will be Q plus gamma 1 H1 is BB, it will be Q plus gamma 1 H1 plus gamma 2 dash H2 at CC. So the Q term will get added to each of these levels. That is a difference when you have a surcharge load Q. Now one thing that you need to be careful about is a unit of Q. Unit of Q should be consistent with gamma H, right? Gamma will be kilonewton per meter cube and H will be meter. So this term will have a unit of kilonewton per meter square. So for us to add, Q should be equal to kilonewton per meter square or in general, the unit of Q should be the same unit as stress. If you have taken this in kilogram per centimeter square, you'll have this as kilogram per centimeter square. Likewise, in general, what we usually do is we have Q in terms of kilonewton per meter square or kilopascals.